Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so I want to try and get back into the habit of doing weekly vlogs and not just not doing vlogs for no reason, um, but at the same time I also know that I don't always have something to sit down and talk about when I sit down and talk about these. Um, like now, for example, I don't necessarily have a topic in mind for sitting down and, and necessarily discussing, other than the ones that may require me to refilm, and I'm still trying to avoid those a little bit because jewel will jewel. Um, having said that, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Um, so anybody who's stuck their nose into internet land or outside of the house or whatever um, over the last few months will probably be aware of the fact that a lot of trans rights are under threat at the moment and yeah, part of the trans community myself. Um, it is something that is definitely concerning and very troubling and very worrying um, from my point of view. Yes, a lot of the big headlines are very focused on the American side of things, but that's not to say that things are perfect over here as well. Um, the big example of that being the whole um, trans, being, uh, trans people being excluded from the ban on conversion therapy um, that the government has still yet to pass anyway. Um, and that's like, it's... it's it's a very worrying thing. I mean, I know I'm in a fortunate situation where my family are very accepting. I'm unlikely to have to ever worry about um, falling victim to something like that. But just because it's not going to affect me directly doesn't mean it's not something I should, shouldn't should be concerned about um, because I am a human being who cares about other human beings. And it is a very troubling thing to, to be aware of that the, the you know that this really harmful practice is a still going on in this country to begin with never mind anything else um and b that if and when they do bring in this ban that they keep delaying bringing in anyway that trans people are going to be excluded from it and you know that's <laughs> that's not a very nice thing to sort of think about um conversion therapy has been proven not to work it's proven to be incredibly damaging for those who go through it um like psychologically damaging and you, you can't change who somebody is at their core it's like all these people worrying that like certain types of media might make their kids gay or might make their kids trans that's bullshit <laughs> sorry for swearing one of these but like yeah um but it is it is absolutely it's absolute bull because you cannot change who a person is by exposing them to certain things all you can do by doing that is make them aware that of the possibility that they may be that and, that, and that's what what kind of happens and that's kind of what it really comes down to is you're not turning them into something that they are not it is you're exposing them to things that allow them to reflect on themselves figure themselves out and they might figure out that that is what they are but if they do they would have figured that out anyway <laughs> regardless of anything else and i am speaking as somebody who grew up at a time where this wasn't allowed to be spoken about in schools this wasn't allowed um it wasn't really in the in the media or anything like that so I didn't have the internet, you know, most of the programming that I consumed, especially like the kids programming, would not have featured anything at all. It was a very, I grew up in a very heteronormative, heteronormative, um, and a very heteronormative upbringing in terms of what I was exposed to. Yes, there were a few things here and there that got me thinking, um, but in terms of like the majority of things that I was exposed to as a child, it was all very cis-normative and very heteronormative. I still did not grow up straight or cis. <laughs> if anything, it delayed my ability to figure myself out. 
because it put these constant roadblocks in the way of me figuring myself out, um, which wouldn't have been there if I'd been exposed to certain ideas and certain trains of thoughts and certain possibilities at a younger age. And so it, it but a case of, um, and, and like the, the questions I would have asked myself would have been different. Um, and when I was starting to figure things out, I would have been less afraid of figuring myself out because I spent a lot of the time figuring myself out, afraid of what the answers were going to be. And that's not a good position to sort of be in. And, I, and as I've mentioned before, I then also spent a huge chunk of my life because I was afraid to live as myself and afraid to kind of acknowledge these things that were going on inside of me because I didn't know if I could or I, I didn't know if I'd like fit into the right box for it or stuff like that. And that's the thing, um, when you don't expose young people to certain things, they think you need to tick all these boxes in order to be X and that's not true. Um, but because they don't have the information that, you know, broadens the the expectations and, the, and that can still like say no actually it's okay that you don't tick all of these boxes because you know the boxes that you do tick still means that you have a reason to question yourself and explore these ideas and maybe you will find out that you are x and maybe you find, you'll find out that you're something else but by giving the information and by exposing the fact that it's not like one box fits all kind of situation and that you have to have all of these things or you have to not have all of these things in order to be something or in order to feel like you might fit a certain label or even the idea that you have to fit a label at all um like not giving young people that those tools and those words and those ideas extremely damaging to young people and I'm speaking as somebody who knows that from experience I would not have self-harmed if I had the language I needed to explain how I was feeling I would not have self-harmed if I felt like I was in an environment where I could express what I was feeling even without the language and have somebody understand what I was talking about and not say that I was crazy and give me the freedom to kind of explore what I was going through in a way that would have been much more productive than what I actually did, which was self-harm. <laughs> and yeah, okay, you can sort of like argue, well, there was a lot of other stuff going on, you know, in my teenagehood that would have led towards the self-harm. I was being bullied. I did have a fall major falling out with my friendship group. But no, most of the reason why I was self-harming was because of all the stuff that I was questioning about myself, because I stopped feeling like a real person, because I felt like who I was was not who I was supposed to be, and I did not have the language and the tools or the resources to figure out who I was supposed to be, and when I did go into counselling, because I was so afraid of all of these things that didn't make sense, I didn't talk about the things that didn't make sense, in a way that would have allowed someone to go, hang on, wait a second, let's break this down, let's look at this from a different angle. It's why I didn't find counselling particularly effective, and every single time I've been in counselling, I continue to not find it particularly effective, because the things that I needed to talk about, I've pushed away and pretended that they weren't there, because I didn't know they were things that were valid, and I didn't know they were things I could talk about, and it all came back to the idea, it all came back to the lack of knowledge that was around at the time that I was growing up. And I spent a good deal of my life not feeling like a real person, feeling incomplete, feeling like I was just waiting for my life to begin, feeling like I was waiting for something to give me permission to be myself because I did not have the resources and the tools and the knowledge at a young enough age to accept myself any sooner than I was able to. And that's why it really frustrates me, all of these things that keep coming in, that keep taking away the knowledge and the tools and the resources to young people who need this stuff. And this is not like just a gender thing, this is a sexuality thing as well, because I, you know, I went through both <laughs> um, 
big struggles. Um, but that's the thing is, if you take these things away from children, you're not stopping these children from being these things. You're not um, giving these children time to figure out these things. You know, when they're older, what you're doing is you're creating an environment where children don't understand what's going on with themselves and don't feel like they can ask and don't feel like they can say these things and don't feel like they can question these things because they're only being presented with one way of things being and and doing and, and stuff like that. And there's no nuance, there's no discussion, there's no freedom to express these things because and you just end up feeling like it's all in your head and you're making it up and that you're going to be doing it for attention and that that train of thought has held me back so much in my life it's not even funny um and not just in in the case again not just in the case of my gender and my sexuality but in the case of my health as well growing up at the time that i did where there was a lack of knowledge about a lot of things and certain things to do with with my health and with my height and mobility I was basically told it wasn't real, it was growing, growing pains, it was just in my head. Made it so that as a teenager in an environment where yeah, certain things were talked about, where the internet wasn't really the, what, it, what, what it is now, so I couldn't just find the information for myself, even if I knew what it was I was looking for. Um, but I, I was also growing up with a mindset that had basically been told, you know, to doubt my own sense of self and to doubt my own sense of identity and to doubt, you know, the signals that I was getting from parts of me, in, in this particular case, from bits of my body, like telling me, no, we're in pain, um, which, you know, it, it, it's a very, when, when you take information away, you're creating an environment of damage, you're creating an environment where people can become very confused, very easily depressed, um, like, you know, like, in some cases, suicidal. Um, I mean, it, it's it's nuts to think that certain people are like, oh, but this stuff will just confuse children. No, not having access to this stuff is what confuses children. And yet it may mean that some straight kids question themselves and some cis kids question themselves, but what's wrong with that? Like, if they question themselves, and at the end of the questioning themselves, they're kind of like, well, you know what? No, that's that's not who I am. I am actually straight. I am actually cis. What's wrong with them having questioned themselves? Like, self-discovery is so important, and it's so vital to everybody that we are constantly questioning ourselves, that we are constantly growing and learning and changing and moving forward and becoming better people, that it seems crazy that you don't want kids to be doing that because trust me kids are doing that anyway i have very clear memories of questioning and reflecting and um basically having an existential crisis at the age of seven and i i knew at the time i may not have had the word existential but i knew at the time that is what i was doing i was questioning who I was as a person, I was questioning my sense of identity and I was making a choice about who I am and who I wanted to be at the age of seven. I did it again at the age of 10, at the age of 13, at the age of 15, and every single time I made the same choice to be myself, to be whoever this person I was that I didn't fully understand, to be them and to find a way of being them. But because I couldn't get access to the knowledge and the information I needed to understand myself, making the choice to be myself didn't mean actually being myself. And so I ended up in a situation where I felt like I was wrong, I was disconnected, I wasn't a real person because who I wanted to be and who I felt I should be wasn't who I actually appeared to be and wasn't who society saw me as, and I just created this huge disconnect because I didn't know that these were things I could talk about. I didn't know there were words for what I was feeling. I didn't know there were people who would have understood what I was going through because I didn't have access 
to that knowledge at the time that I needed it. So I then spent the majority of my adulthood, the majority of my life, feeling like I wasn't a real person because I couldn't be who I knew I was because I didn't know I could be myself. <laughs> even though that was a choice I kept making and yeah it, it's it feels like as you know now speaking of this as an adult like reflecting back on on everything that I've been I've been through that although I chose to be myself four times throughout my childhood the only time I actually really chose to be myself and understood what that meant and made the decision that made me a person again, made me feel like I was real again, was when I chose to come out. So for all of the internally choosing to be me, but not knowing how, who I was and not knowing how to express that and not feeling like I could tell anybody that's what, who I was, once I was able to kind of go, no, this is me, this is who I am, and actually express it to the world and be myself finally, that was when I felt like a weight had been lifted off of me and after over over 15 years of feeling like a fake person, like someone who doesn't really exist, mm. I finally felt whole and complete and real and like a real person again. So why does it worry me so much that we are taking away information and we're, we're banning things that shouldn't be banned and we're stopping people, stopping children from learning about who they are and who they are meant to be. That's the reason. I grew up without the knowledge, without the access that a lot of kids nowadays have. Why are more kids coming out at younger ages than they used to? It's because they have access to the knowledge that they didn't have when I was a child. I knew as a child that I was not living the life I was supposed to live. I just didn't have the knowledge, the tools, the information, and the vocabulary to express what I was feeling. If I had, I probably would have been one of those kids that came out. Because I knew as a child who I was. So the idea that exposing children to certain things is going to turn them into something that they are not is nonsense. I was exposed to cishet media constantly growing up as a child did not make me cishet. I grew up without access to this knowledge and this information didn't make me grow up cishet. All it did was cause so much pain and so much confusion and so much delay in me living as my authentic self. And yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um Okay, so this sort of got a bit muddled and sidetracked and went a little bit all over the place, I guess. Um I'm going to leave this here, I think, um, as sort of my first kind of okay. I've talked about this, I may not know, may not have done the best job of talking about it, but I've definitely talked about it. <laughs> um, hopefully you found this one sort of interesting. I know it's been a little bit ranty, but I feel like I need to sort of start expressing some of this stuff because it's stuff that I genuinely care about and, you know, I care about the, you know, future generations of queer kids in whatever form that they take, not growing up in the world that I grew up in, which kind of denies who you are to the extent where it is harmful. Um, I want a future where, you know, whatever age it is you figure yourself out, that's cool, and that's good, and you'll believe and you're valid. I don't want the world that I grew up in to come back because I know firsthand how harmful that world was. And yeah, okay, my experiences are nowhere near as bad as some people's experiences, and I get that, I do appreciate that. Like, a lot of it was internal conflict um, for me, and, you know, that is different to, you know, some of, the, some of the cruel things that some people go through. But yeah, the fact that I can even say that, like, the fact that I can say that, you know, 
oh yeah, I didn't, you know, I had it fairly easy when I'm just, when I'm just kind of gone, yeah, no, that confusion, you know, caused me a lot of pain and, and caused me a lot of, of, of stress and depression. But no, actually, some people have it worse and some people do have it worse and some people are in, in situations and in positions where it is, you know, where, where they're having to hide who they are, where they're having to go through awful, awful, awful treatment because of who they are. And, you know, for me to kind of go, yeah, well, most of mine sort of like internal conflict and confusion. Yeah, that's not so bad. I appreciate it's not so bad. The fact that I can say what I went through is not so bad compared to what some people go through should say everything. Like, this this is a serious issue. We need to bring more spotlight and more attention to, you know, just how horrible horrible this situation can be for some people and yeah okay I'm gonna I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop babbling because I'm just gonna keep repeating myself and going around in circles and and whatever else um so yeah I hope you found this one sort of interesting I hope you appreciate sort of what I'm trying to to do and, and sort of say here I hope you're looking forward to whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time and I will see you next time see ya <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, see ya!